Hey everyone. This is Alex Pernicki and Kit, Kit Maher. We are Sylvester English. This is Sylvester Pitmaster at Kinfolk Barbecue. Barbecue. We're here in Taunton uh, at his food truck, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his award-winning barbecue that brings people in all day long. Yeah. Uh, sells out every day. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your barbecue and what makes it so special? Well, you know, first of all, you know, cooking to me all together is, you know, it comes from the heart. You know, I cook. And when I get out here, I do it because I love to do it. It's just not a job. I do it with passion. And, you know, I think people could actually taste that in my food, and that keeps people coming back. And, you know, I've been around barbecue my whole life. So, you know, you know, backyard cookouts, back home in Florida, you know, and I started on the corner in Tallahassee with a, with a smoker and a tent. And um, I graduated from that. I started on a professional circuit with the Florida Barbecue Association. And, you know, I, I amassed over 200 trophies and awards cooking barbecue and doing various fairs up and down the East Coast. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been a real pleasure just to, to do this for a living. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And so you got some of it prepared here for us. So if you want to run us through quick what we got here and what we're, what we're about to we check can out. Turn the camera. So we got um, some of this for us. So you said this is the spread you would put on yes. a judging See, table. To the right is just a plate, just an average plate. This is what, you know, keeps the people coming back. You know, usually you wouldn't put any sauce on anything for the average customer because you never know you have a lot of diabetes and stuff. Now the plate to the left is something that I would put in a competition box for yeah. professional trained judges. You know, glaze, barbecue sauce. This piece of pulled pork here is called the muscle. Uh -huh. And we call it the muscle money. Muscle money. <laughs> the muscle money. Right. This is the most flavorful piece of pork okay. out of the whole pork bun. Alright. All right. Cool. Yeah. So Tell us a little bit about your philosophy for barbecue. So you said there's only two ways to have barbecue. Can you tell us about uh, that? Uh, not two ways. I mean, there's various, many types of ways to barbecue. But I think, you know, people always ask me, you know, what, what type of barbecue do you serve? Is it new? Is it um, Mississippi? Is it dry rub? Is it wet? Is it Alabama? Is it Memphis? I just tell them like this. There's only two types of barbecue that's good and bad, and you can get that anywhere. That's awesome. We like that philosophy. Because I think you can have a food truck on the side of the road, or you can have a restaurant, but whether or not you're cooking that barbecue authentically and with your yeah. own style and flair, adding your stamp and signature, like those are the things that make it special. Are there any things, like, is there anything about your meat that you add your stamp and signature to a traditional barbecue plate? You know, my the only ingredient I always give out and that's love. I put love in everything I do, and that's the only ingredient I give out. Everything else, you just have to taste and just it's guess. A okay. <laughs> what about a little history about? So you were saying you you used to travel a lot. You've been here for five years, and uh, you had some new developments coming soon. So can you tell us about that? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so when I originally started coming to New England, I was doing the Brockton Fair about nine years ago, and then I opened a, a place in in Brockton, and it was doing fairly well. But I put one of my mobile units out here on 44 in Taunton in three months it was blowing away the, the storefront and um since then that's been five years ago I have outgrown the mobile unit so now I have two new storefronts that's developing now one here in Taunton 289 Winthorpe Street which will be opening the first week in December and one in Middleborough that will be opening during the spring cool. 378 Center Street and then as far as like your followers, you were number one voted for the best of mass search. Would you say that you have regular customers or you said you have a line around the corner for your fried chicken on weekends? Tell us a little bit about your customer base and your following. Yeah, calling. I mean, when I first started, you know, everybody had, you know, cause I was new to the state. So, you know, pretty much everybody had their own favorites. And I have drawn people from every place I believe that ever served barbecue in Massachusetts. I hear people, oh, I used to go here. Oh, I used to go there. Oh, I used to go here. But now they come here. So, you know, getting the number one votes, you know, by the customers, you know, that's a privilege. You know, that's an honor. And I want to thank all of my customers for making me number one people's choice. Yeah. So we're really excited to get started on these. Can you tell us a little bit about the sides? So you said that's your grandmother's recipe? Yes. All right. So here so let's see we have sides. the collard greens, Yum. homemade potato salad, mustard and mayo based, and baked macaroni and cheese. Delicious. 
sauce. This is our signature sauce, mustard, garlic, sweet, and spicy garlic. So yeah, we don't want to keep you too long. You said yeah. that you've been here since 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah tell us a little bit about your process. Yeah. Well, I get up every morning. Well, sometimes during the summer I get up. Sometimes we have some, I probably catered 20, 25 weddings this summer. So sometimes I'm up three, four o'clock in the morning, mostly smoking, getting the smoker started. And like I said, we're here till we sold out. So, you know, some people, you know, we don't have a phone on site. And, you know, some people get mad because when they get here, we're sold out of a lot of things. I mean, but we can only hold so much in the food truck. But once we get in our storefront, that problem will be solved. Yeah. Okay. So you're catering to the people. You got sold out many days. So almost every day you say sold yes. out. Okay. Because you cook what you have. And I cook what I have, and when it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And we're gonna give a little look at the food truck. We're just down the down the parking lot, but there is Kim Folk Smoke and Barbecue, just right here on the side of the road in Taunton, and we're tasting outside at their picnic table. So we got everything set up, everything good to go. We want to try this barbecue while it's hot. So I'm gonna set down the camera so we can try this barbecue. And of course, tell you what we think. So, do you have a favorite um, out of yours, out of the meat that you make? Oh, you said you don't yeah. eat barbecue. Actually, so. I don't eat barbecue. I have probably eaten enough barbecue for the whole state of Massachusetts. <laughs> I haven't eaten barbecue in years. You know, when I was competing professionally, and as I got higher ranks, there was new teams coming in, and the other cooks would come and be like, try this, what do you think? Try this, what do you think? So, you know, I'm just completely burnt out on barbecue. You're burnt out on barbecue. What do you eat then? What do you like to eat? I eat seafood. Seafood? I eat New England seafood. I love nice. lobster. Hey, <laughs> that's like a good trade-off. Yeah, it, it really is. I, actually, I have this smoked lobster roll that I do. I do it on special every once in a while. The last time I did it, the first time I did it, there were 100 people lined up when I opened. <laughs> no I sold way. 200 lobster rolls in an hour. Hey, you got to do that more often. Apparently. 200 lobster rolls in an hour. Smoked lobster rolls. Oh, well, I hope to see that back. I would I would come for that. We're actually going to have it on the menu when I open the storefront. Saturdays and Sundays only until sold out. And I also just put on Facebook last week if you want to go check it out. I'm practicing a smoked clam lobster chowder. Wow. Came out really well. lobster chowder. That sounds All awesome. right, I'm going to that. Right. I think the lot we did a, a best of best. A lot of places put lobster in it. Yeah. So that's always like good. I think you can use some lobster on the side for sure. Lobster collard greens. <laughs> so, do you have uh, yeah, one really of the meats good. that are more popular yeah. with uh, your customers, whether it be ribs or the pulled pork? Thank well, you. The most sure. popular meat to start off with, because everybody knows knew about pulled pork, but many people when I first started here, you know, six, seven years ago, people didn't know about brisket. Brisket, brisket. is the most popular right now. Okay. Yeah. It's difficult so to it's make awesome too because yeah. it's thin and thick. Yes. Which side of the brisket do you typically I serve? use whole briskets. Okay. okay. So you know, you know, they they all come in different sides. That's why I say you gotta love your meat because yeah. every single meat is different. A different size, different thickness, different weight. So you know you gotta yeah. you gotta pamper it. We're gonna show I'm gonna show a close up of the meat yeah. because it's just like gotta check it out one more time before we dig in. So go ahead and try it and tell me what you think, Alex. Yeah, no, show. I tried some of this the chopped brisket here and it, it's awesome. It has a nice sweet smokiness to it. It's it's got a great consistency. It's juicy, you know, not too dry, but just dry enough where it has a, a great texture and chew to it. It's and really good. What kind of rubs are you using? What I use all dry rubs. All no, dry. Yeah, nothing okay. wet. Everything is dry rub and um Put right on the smoke. I know a lot of people like the dry rub and let it sit for 24 hours and all of that. But you know, the smoke is what makes the rub a consistent, you know, to the meat. Okay, got it. And you know, smoking is, it's a science. You gotta know how much wood, how much smoke, depending on how much meat you have on the smoker. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's like a weird science. You know, if I have 200 pounds of brisket on the smoker, I might have 20 pounds of wood smoking in the, in, on the smoker too. So, you know, it's like a weird science, you know, and yeah. I, I've been at this for years and, and amazingly, I'm still getting better. You know, when I first started, I was just ribs and chicken. And when I was competing, some of the competitions I went to, you know, you couldn't sell your barbecue unless you offered an item in the competition. So at first I was just doing ribs. And then one competition I was set up um, next to Myron Mix. Myron Mixon, five-time world champion. 
and he came over to me and he said, no offense, you're black. I know you could cook chicken. <laughs> so I said, yeah, I, the next week I cooked chicken and took a fifth place. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Did you take any? Yeah, no. then after I started winning, he started turning his back on me. But I learned a lot from a lot of the guys on the circuit as far as professional you know, yeah. competition. But, you know, most, the average customer don't want a professional box, you know. So, you know, it doesn't, I had to make a distinction and find my own glitch in the barbecue game, yeah. I would say. Can you tell our viewers what wood you use? I use apple, cherry, and hickory. Mostly cherry and hickory. I, got, I like to use apple a lot during the summer. Just because, like I said, it's a science. Something about the summer air and the apple wood. You know, it's hard to explain, but I've been doing this for so long that, you know, I just wake up in the morning and I sniff around the air and I'm like, I'm using some cherry today. Really? It might sound crazy, but that's just that's just how I do it. What do you smell that makes you like get the, like during the summer? winter? The air is really thin, so I use more hickory because it's a more of a a solid wood. Cherry and apple is a denser wood, so therefore the smoke travels through the meat faster. I hope that I'm not educating you guys too no, much. No, we want this. This is, this is the best mess barbecue. We got to learn from the best. So you keep telling us, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so you know, the denser the wood, the faster the smoke travels through the meat. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So it gets a little, is that a smokier feel with yes. the denser wood? And then with it the is. lighter wood, it's less smoky? Yes. What do you prefer like to serve? To me, I'm a light smoker, you know. Like I said, my briskets go 12, 14. I hear people say they smoke their briskets for 18, 24 hours. You know, most people that smoke their brisket for 18, 24 hours, they're home at night while their brisket is in the machine and praying that the power don't go out. You know, I'm actually here cooking my meat. Yeah. And you're, are you the only pit master here? I have two sons that I'm training that works oh, with me every day. You know. Awesome. Got to get them in the business, right? Yeah. 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 And it is a science, so it's like something where you really have to be out there. For. I mean, and I've been training one of my sons for five years, and like I said, I'm still learning and still getting better. So, you know, I keep telling him he get frustrated sometimes. He might burn a rack of ribs or two, and I'm like, look, it's not. It's okay. It's going to happen. Yeah, that trial and error is really good. Exactly. Yeah, All right, before it gets too cold, I better yeah, let's taste it. a bit. Let's dig in here. Yeah, so we want you still in the shot. So... I want to oh, these sorry. ribs here, kid. Okay. Yeah, those look awesome. All right. So. And so is this your? Uh, sorry about that, so guys. Sauce, the barbecue Can sauce on the ribs. Yes. That is my sweet sauce that's based on the rib. All right. I'm gonna try the ribs. So we want to make sure you're still in there. Perfect. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Cheers. <laughs> I like that. Would you call that the bark of the bread? It is. Yeah, I like yeah. the thick bark. You got that? I, I really tell my delicious. son all the time. He cooks his ribs, and I'm like, look, it has to have some char on it. it yeah. Has, barbecue has char on it. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, you That's see how it just it comes, comes off, off the bone, bone like yeah. perfect, so it's not all off the bone because you still have the really thick. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about eating. Oh well. <laughs> Whatever. No. This is great. No, so you see it comes right off the bone when you bite in it. There's no toughness on it. You don't feel like anything sticking. That's really excellent. Yeah, I gotta stop myself. I got a long way this week. Okay, ribs, excellent. Yeah, are... Check. I'm gonna eat that for dinner, yeah. All right, so why don't we dig in the brisket a little bit and you could tell us a little bit more about your okay. process while we're eating. So the brisket, you said you use the whole brisket. Yeah, see the what brisket. What part is this? This is actually the flat. flat. I cooked the whole brisket, but I, I gave you guys the flat because it's the, the most tender, most, you know, So this is our brisket. brisket. We got the flat for the brisket, which is the most tender. Nice. And usually I, I don't inject, only for competition, but this one, I knew you guys were coming, so I did inject this one this morning for you guys. Okay, okay. what do you inject it with? I inject it with a secret. Okay. Super yeah, awesome. right? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Number one ingredient. Love. I gotta get some sauce in yes. here. I like oh, I like good. sauce and okay. I love the Besides option of yeah, you gotta too. try this yellow sauce. That's the signature one. Okay. So this is his signature sauce at Kinfolks. Secret recipe. The only ingredient he's letting us know is love. I like that. So you, you gotta have right? something close to home. You yeah, can't let it. Yeah. 
I think that's important to like love what you do. We had yeah. a lot of people who, who said that you know they do this because they like it. If you don't, it's nothing, you're not gonna wake up at four. You know? Look, only the love of this gets me out here in the morning when it's negative two degrees. I can imagine, yeah. Yes, yeah. some mornings I'm out here is negative two. <laughs> Negative five degrees, and if I didn't love to do this, you I wouldn't do be it. out here. I wouldn't have moved to, to New England to do this if I didn't love to do this. Yeah. Why did you move to New England? I, I moved to New England because there was a call at the time for barbecue. I, when I started coming up in here and I was doing the Brockton Fair, like I said, eight, nine years ago when I originally started coming here, you know, most people thought hot dogs and hamburgers was barbecue. Right. So I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, once I started, you know, bringing southern traditional southern barbecue you know i was raised to cook it's like it just took off yeah you know i have people come from connecticut new york uh, maine new hampshire you know they'll call early in the morning on the business phone like six o'clock and be like are you open today and i'll be like yeah and i see them three hours later no wow. way <laughs> yes i gotta tell you this sauce is something else yeah with that like, funny mustard. Yeah, yeah. you taste the mustard yeah. in it. It's a, it's it tastes like, um, really sweet oh my God, so good. I, I have nice these favorite too. pretzels I have that are like honey mustard dusted in Snyder's. Yeah. And it tastes like the <laughs> most beautiful, saucy, homemade version of that. Really good. Obviously much better, but I just, it reminded oh, me of that good. flavor. You guys got to try the macaroni cheese and taste it. Yeah. Okay, let's get that. Yeah. All right, Alex is going to bring over that. some of the sides. Yeah, here. Cool. All right, so we got so mac and cheese. Your grandmother's recipe? Yes. All right, I trust her. Let's see. <laughs> oh my god. Is this like a baked mac and cheese? It is. That's really good. Oh. You want to? Um, Just as creamy as it is, like you get that really yeah. packed flavor of cheese, but it's not too uh, runny. Like I like a thick mac and cheese. Like the cheese. What kind of cheeses do you use? For I use four cheeses. Four cheeses. Yeah. I make these sides every day. We're taking this every in the day. Car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so these are fresh made daily. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing stands another day here. Yeah. So I think we had actually. So we have a question for you. They're talking a little bit more about your storefront. Like, where can you get their barbecue? And can you explain a little bit more about the what's coming next, the storefront? Um, the first storefront will be open, hopefully, prayerfully, no later than December fourth. 289 Winthorpe Street okay. in Taunton. Great. The second storefront, spring, hopefully in April, 378 Center Street in Middleborough. Okay, and this location is here in Taunton. This Great. location is here in Taunton. It is 5 Cape Road, Taunton. All right, and you'll open till 4, correct? We'll open till we sell out. We usually start selling out of stuff anywhere between 3.30 and 4.30. It's pretty religious because everybody knows, you know, get here we have big lunch rushes i think we had over 120 customers today so you know you know I, i've been doing these numbers like this because i've been a kitchen manager at olive garden tgi fridays um smoky bones you know i started in the restaurant business when i was 15 at burger king so this is something i've been doing my whole life so food i am food so all right yeah yeah this is awesome so we got a mean spread here with these delicious sauces, these yeah. awesome sides. The potato sides. salad is awesome. I love the greens as well. Um, is there anything special you put in? Like, I, there's a kind of a different taste in the potato salad that I really like. Potato salad, you know, southern potato salad. You know, a lot of people up here say, you know, if it have eggs in it, it's not potato salad, it's egg salad. Well, it has eggs in it. It's southern like potato salad. It has eggs, mustard, palmetto, relish, green peppers, onion, celery, like I said, I make this fresh daily, and you know we we sell it by tens of pounds. That's good. Right. And before we sign off, so could we walk up to the storefront yeah. and see, show people what's going on there, and then we can come back here, finish up yeah. our meals, maybe take some for the road. I've been yeah. eyeing that it's, mac and it's cheese. All, it's all you guys. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you. We'll go back up. All right. Thanks so much. So for everybody who is tuning in, we're here at Kim Folks Barbecue, which is in Taunton, Mass. on 5 Cape Road. And the pitmaster and owner, Sylvester, has been telling us about his experience as a pitmaster and served us some of his famous and award-winning 
barbecue, which is ribs, brisket, and bulk pork, what we're judging today. Now, I don't know if your sons are inside, but if they yeah, want to say are. hello. So this is Kim folks right here. So this is my son, Sylvester Jr. Hey, Who how are you? Uh, I'm doing good, how you doing? <laughs> it was, uh, This is my nephew, Lazar. How y'all doing? Hey, and this how are is you, Lazar? my other son, Very Nicholas. Very nice to meet you. Can you, guys, can you tell me a little bit about the practice of barbecue? I know that Sylvester has been coming into science. So, in your process of learning about it, what are some of the things that you've been picking up or maybe some frustrations of cooking barbecue? Yeah, you gotta be real patient. You gotta be patient and you gotta be on point. Yeah, yeah. Food, everything so, got it. You don't want anybody getting sick or anything, so you wanna make sure everything. Well, yeah. Yeah, and it is a lot of science behind it too because if you gotta make sure every all the food is prepared on time even the slightest five minutes off late and it could ruin everything, everything, everything. you gotta make sure you check on it every hour on the dog all that it's, it's a lot of work to it but you know it's really nice to see what everybody like everybody liking it enjoying it every single day and it's really, it pays off for itself yeah what about you well um i'm well usually um it's uh, just whatever, you know, it's like they said, it's, it's a science to it. Um, usually I'm the one who's kind of helping them cook, cook some of the stuff. And um, me yeah. trying to cook it, some some of the stuff by myself, it's been a little, ch a little challenging because uh, it's it's all precise and what you guys want. So well, it's a hard time. It's a hard thing to do. Yeah, definitely. What would you think, think is the toughest to cook and then maybe like the hardest element about, you know, working in a like in a fast pace like it's slow you have to take time but it's also fast paced since so many customers yeah, come it, it is very fast paced um just so trying to stay ahead with people you know what I mean? just trying to stay ahead keep your product moving in and, and you know, yeah. the toughest thing to cook probably for me right now uh, is, is the beef the beef because you have yeah, that because yeah, yeah. we have a certain our, our secret temperature and it has to be on there it has to be dead centered on that temperature it can't be over or over or under, it's, it's a, that's probably the hardest thing right now. Got it. Right now. Yeah, well, thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Thanks, Sylvester. Yeah, well, we appreciate you showing us a little bit about your business and how it's grown over the years and the love and the science that you put into it. We really appreciate it. And these are the types of places we love, that we love to see. All so, right. yeah, we'll hope to um, connect with you. Yeah, so all is right. there anything, uh, final yeah. thing you want to say to your uh, your fans here? Or yeah, I just yeah. want to say thank you all for making Ken Folks number one people choice in the state of Massachusetts, and we'll see you soon.